television highlight of the news of yesteryear. Historic surrender at Scapa Flow, November 17, 1918. Germany had given up the week before, and armistice term has demanded the turning over of the Deutschland fleet to the victorious Allies. Within the week, 20 miles of German warships gave up. Here, the youthful Prince of Wales aboard the USS New York watches as the terms of British Admiral Sir David Beatty are carried out. King George V is present in the Firth of Forth as Germany's beaten battle wagons bow to the pact made between Admiral Beatty and its Rear Admiral von Mürer. Naval death of a defeated nation. Admiral Beatty, Admiral Rotman, King George, the Prince of Wales, and Admiral Sims. Included in Germany's sea power to be interned and disarmed by the terms of the armistice are six battle cruisers, 10 battleships, eight light cruisers, including two mine layers, 50 destroyers, and the scourge of the underwater underworld, the U-boat. Even as these surface warships steam past Allied ships, even though Germany has officially given up, the Kaiser's Navy is not trusted, and Jack Tars on British men of war are at their battle stations waiting for the first indication of treachery, ready to blast the enemy ships to the bottom. Despite these fears, the surrender was made without incident. The greatest naval force ever to haul down its flag was handed over without a shot being fired. Only once was this battle force in action. May 31st, 1916, saw the Battle of Jutland, a tremendous victory for the British Navy. Never again during World War I was the German fleet to venture from its harbor. Dreaded U-boats, which menaced Allied shipping all during the war, rise to the surface to join the parade of defeat. But this story is not over, even though the surrendered vessels were ferried by their own crews to Scapa Flow off the Scottish coast. For in June 1919, the same German seamen who were interned with their ships after the surrender, succeeded in scuttling many of them. These scenes you are watching are the epic climax of the conflict that began with Germany's invasion of Belgium and ended with the defeat of Germany, the downfall of the Hohenzollern ruling family, and the passing of control to a friction-full political party that spawned the Hitler of World War II. Diamond, typifying the glorified gangster era of the late 20s. Arrested 17 times, acquitted 17 times. Suspected of every crime in the book, Legs Diamond led a charmed life temporarily. Returning from Europe in 1930, he became the target of an aroused public and rival gangsters. End of an era was in sight as Diamond is again in custody. It's ironic that peace officers had no part in terminating his career. Released from charges, Diamond was shot up by opposition mobsters in October 1930. Legs survived this shooting, but in Albany, New York, rival gangsters killed him in this rooming house. A public enemy in life, his death started a reform wave that drove gangs into hiding or prison cells. This was Legs Diamond. Hawaii's startling phenomenon, the ever-active volcano of Mount Kilauea. In 1924, the bubbling mass of lava you see here burst out in the open, causing tremendous losses of life and property. Now a sightseer's goal, Kilauea represents a constant threat to Hawaii. Revered by ancient Polynesians and worshipped as a god, its lava, devastating when unleashed, does have a beneficial aspect, for the volcanic overflow is credited with enriching the soil of Hawaii and contributing to its agricultural wealth. Nature, in its preeminent example of perversity, creates a crater capable of economic benefit or complete devastation. It's the early 1920s, and Miss Danguette pays us a visit. French stage star since 1899, Miss Danguette's legs reputed to be the most beautiful in the world, were insured for a million dollars. 
These shots, taken around the age of 60, indicate why the dandies of two continents swooned at her feet and stared at her legs. Baden Powell, founder of the Boy Scouts in 1908, inspects new scouts in London years later. A veteran of early African and Indian campaigns, Baden Powell received a peerage for creating the Boy and Girl Scout movement. Yesterday's movie King and Queen, it's Edward Earl and Billy Burke, with Earl meeting Patricia, daughter of his queen. Beautiful Billy Burke was married to Florence Ziegfeld, the Follies producer. And in a contest sponsored to aid New York City's poor, she and Edward Earl topped all of Movieland stars. Edward Earl and Billy Burke. Insurrection in Ireland. It's 1921, and Airman de Valera, president of Aaron's National Assembly, heads the new Irish Free State after years of struggle against British domination. Since the founding of the Sinn Féin in 1910, revolt had seized in Ireland, revolt had flamed into armed conflict as the Irish protested against conscription in World War I. Easter Sunday, 1916, saw a heated outbreak in Dublin. Soon, Britain's feared black and tans arrived to preserve order. Early Irish leaders like Robert Emmett and forceful Mike Collins call for concerted effort against the British. And in London, Prime Minister David Lloyd George carried the Irish question directly to King George. Unrest in Ireland continued as no tangible results came from London. Then in 1920, Ambush of black and tans, sabotage, and a reign of terror finally resulted in a pact between De Valera and Lloyd George in December 1921. Ireland had become a republic. The Irish Free State was born. Watch the screen for one of the earliest dramatic moments ever filmed. It's 1910, and Theodore Roosevelt arrives at Wright Fairgrounds. Fascinated by the flying exhibition, the former president is ready and eager to accept the invitation of aviator Art Hoxie. And here is Teddy Roosevelt in the plane, the first ex-president to fly. Only just returned from a hunting trip to Africa, the popular Teddy thrills the huge crowd by his decision. These are historic pictures of a great American and the birth of a gigantic industry, aviation. The daring that won him fame at San Juan Hill when he led his Rough Riders to victory is evidenced here. With aviation in its infancy and each flight a perilous experience, it's Teddy who set the example. Teddy Roosevelt is in the air. As the Wright biplane lands, three minutes and 20 seconds later, the famed leader of the Rough Riders, prototype of American daring and decision, is given a tremendous cheer from the crowd for his successful adventure. Yes, sir, Teddy does it again. of the late 20s. Hollywood leads off with this riding habit over which the model wears a French velour trench coat. The habit itself is informal, made expressly for the casual equestrian. W.W. W. Hook created this outfit, which enjoyed quite a vogue. For the feminine tennis enthusiast, Hollywood's Dot Grayson designed this striped silk kerchief frock with hat to match. Unusual and unique creation from the movie capital was this afternoon dinner dress of black sheer outlined with Moliere ribbon. Full-length sleeves and the bodice are in black tulle.
formal evening gown introducing a new style element featuring shorter bodice and uneven hemline. The gown is of gold brocade with bands and lining of gold metal cloth. Formal pink corded silk taffeta for evening. The circular ruffles are finished with taffeta fringe and a luxurious wrap of white Russian ermine with mink collar lined with cherry red chiffon complements the ensemble. Modes for milady. Exotic, exclusive, and naturally expensive. Let's go south in 1927 to watch Pete Desjardins, national diving champ, in a full twist. Pete in a layout half gainer followed by a jackknife version of the same dive. The swan dive. Champion for three years, Pete now does the difficult two and a half. Then the front one and a half with a new twist. It's Daytona Beach, Florida, March 1927. And here's the initial unveiling of Major Seagrave and his mystery speed car, the Sunbeam. Seagrave is out to set a new speed record, and here's his mystery car. Radical in design and construction, about to take off on a trial run. A bumpy beach marred the first attempt at a new world's record, but the following day, Seagrave and the Sunbeam set a new record time of 166.51 miles per hour. 